ain't Linda Paris aboard the Titanic because there was no lifeline for our ancestors. Again, hit that like button, share and subscribe, and don't forget our ancestors who died on the Titanic. Black Titanic. This is Melody Cherie talking about the Eminem kids. They say they gonna be in partnership together in business. Y'all not talking about kids. I asked them. I said, no. How is that gonna work with y'all? Go back a little bit, y'all. This is so funny. I've been loving working with Posner. I'm not gonna lie. Posner is so bomb, man. Woman owned, <laughs> woman owned business and um.
people have, people they come in contact with, and they're no longer wanting to be in the business or build homes or do commercial work, and they'll pass over their contractor's license to somebody else. So, honey, when I say the setup over here is real, the setup is real. The setup is real. Oh, the setup is real, honey. Yeah, these are the purple heart ones. It's a whole, they're so pretty. And they smell good too. I ain't even gonna lie. I know I'm kind of picky. I'm kind of picky, but hey, look at these purple ones. They're so pretty. I know it's pretty. I love Cosner so much. They are so, they are so amazing. I love working with them. I love working with them. So, this again, y'all just came out here and did a little nails. They're so bright and pretty. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, child, they ain't, they not gonna be stressing me as I get older. They show I ain't no longer. No, no, no. I just ain't anything about sugar mom because sugar mom used to copy me all the time and be like, no, no, no. No, no, no. That's right. I'm not playing in the mess with me. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. That's what my kids. Who is that? Who was that recently said Malia told them she just wanted some peace? She... There you have it. Melody talking about generation of wealth with the children. She just wanted some so you guys go ahead on hit that like button share and subscribe listen you guys we can post the eminem kids but not melody so and and so let's keep the eminem kids lifted up you guys yeah let's keep our favorite nieces and nephew and grandma band keep them lifted up uh he hasn't stopped anything he hasn't blocked anything so i was so glad when tay talks talked to her she confirmed it that we can we can uplift the eminem kids ourselves so i'm glad that message is out but this is miss a band interview with kiss magazine k-i-s-h about the eminem kids i think this one is a trip to the zoo she love her grandkids. She always writing about the stories and the adventures she had with her grandkids. Stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned for this little interview. Now, y'all go to Kiss Magazine, y'all, and read up on that interview. It was too much for me to put up here, but y'all go to uh, uh, that magazine and read up on it. And Miss Band, can you give me an interview? <laughs> Give Black Titan an interview, Miss Band. Hit me up. To the zoo with the children, but Kiss Magazine, K I S H, exclusive interview with Vanessa. Roger Tracy. Okay, she's becoming one of reality TV's favorite mom. Vanessa Tracy is a woman who you don't want to miss. As a proud Brunswick, Alabama native and mother of Melody Cherie, she is part of a rising entertainment powerhouse. Now, I'm just going to uh, push it on down here. As a former radio host and former first lady, Vanessa continues to blaze trails in the author of Usher Yet Abandoned. The mask of a first lady, she is also the author of a newly released series for children, Chronicles of a Grandma Mother, Volume 1. And like I said, she got a trip to the zoo coming out also, y'all. Y'all didn't know that, but I write children book too. I wrote one back, and maybe about the year 2000. The recipient of the Woman of Purpose Award and founder of BRT Media, LLC. She is also a speaker, a real estate professional, TV personality. But now, so life is a reflection of what can happen when you use 
every good give and give and encourage others to do the same the entertainment world will soon get to experience much more of a nasa in the next season of love and Mary huntsville and that goes to show me that they have not shown this band he go a trip to grandmama house so we must lift up miss band y'all always on a contribution path to elevate with god family business and philanthropy prepare to witness the innovative spirit of vanessa roger tracy as she offered the world even more i'm so proud of her Shamika, I'm except, except, exceptionally happy to interview you. I have a, a few questions for you. If anything is too much for you, we will just skip right on to the next question. Listen, y'all see how wonderful Miss Van is, how much of a role model she is. She's a role model for all mothers. She's a role model as a grandmother. Yet, uh, they will block her from being on a TV show that her daughter created. I want all of you to help me mute other moms that come on this show. Blackout. When we know that they're going to be on this show, all these mothers, these ghetto hood rats mothers going to be on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Help me to black out. We want to send Carlos Kings a message on a message. We would not be watching these mothers anymore. And we got to mute them and uh, let it be the lowest rating ever because if Miss Van is blocked off that show, then these other mothers should not be on this show. These ghetto hood rat mothers. Also, I'm going to tell y'all something. I thought the Scots was bad watching them because they 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 always just have fake storylines. But Carlos have hired Stormy and her mother and her auntie and all of them. It's just too ghetto, you guys. It's full of violence. It's full of ignorance. It's full of negligence. It's full of deceit. Any and every stereotype that's out there about the black family, Stormy and her mother represent. So I will hope that you guys join me into muting these moms, muting the blackout on these moms because Miss Van been blacked out from the network. Someone that's an interpret, what y'all call entrepreneur someone that have great morals and character. And even that, her daughter created this show. How are you going to take them? Her, she should be the main character along with her daughter. But yet we have to watch all these ghetto hood rat, these big bugs on this show. Help me. Join me into blacking out when these mothers come on. And I'm talking to all you bloggers also. I know some of you probably won't do it, but that's how we get to send a message like we did with Miss Wanda. We have to do the same thing that we did to Miss Wanda. We have to do it to these mothers also. Thank you. This is Black Titanic. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Yo, Facebook, uh, I guess they kicked us off. I guess the message was getting a little too deep. So I'm going to repeat it again. Um, I want you guys to understand one simple fact. I got emailed today, or it was a DM, and a young lady was telling me how she feels as if that since she has held this man down, she has been with him through his lowest of lows, and she's proven that no matter how he treats her, no matter if he cheats, no matter if he's upset, she's going to stay there to hold him down. And she asked me this simple question, and I want everyone to understand this. When she asked me, she was like, Ace, isn't this person going to reward me later on for the fact that I'm holding them down right now? And, and the thing is, I know a lot of you watching right now, you're going to act like you have never been there in your life before. But let's be honest. Sometimes love will make you do some things that's outside your character, like mess with your rationale to the point where you think enduring pain 
and discomfort and toxicity is going to eventually get you what you want from a person. That as long as you continue to pour into that person over and over and over and you don't worry about being poured into, eventually that person is going to reward you with a wing, reward you with matrimony, reward you with them kids and that white picket fence. You keep thinking that in your head because you in love. Not with yourself, but with them. You keep thinking all that porn is going to eventually get reciprocated to you. And you find out later on that you have porn into a person only for them to take what you gave them, leave after they've broken you and take all that goodness and pour it to somebody else. Let me ask you the simple question. How many toxic relationships have you endured with the hopes of getting a reward at the end only to see that man go to another woman and give him that ring he was supposed to give you? You know, do Tisha have a mental illness, you guys? I noticed her, she and um, um, even coleslaw always copying mail. But Tisha got, I, this is the worst I ever seen. So it says that people that are always copying off of you, they are lacking in a sense of self. Who is this girl? I, we don't know who she is. Season after season after season, you don't know who she is because I've never seen her be herself. I've never seen her be unique. She act like she don't know who she is. It seems like being Melody is just be it's awesome being Melody, right? She's just green with envy over over uh Melody, who Melody personality is. She's so envious of Melody to she copy everything that she do. Look at look at this hairstyle, y'all. And that color was a male have had that color too. And then this color that Mel got in her hair now, she's also have put her hair in that color. She is so insecure. And then why is it she insecure? Is it because she knows that her husband really got a crush on Melody? If this is why she try to look like Melody so her husband can pay attention to her. Well, a lack of self-esteem can cause her to feel really, really, really bad about herself. So she copy. She copy Melody. She admire Melody. And then she go as far as pretending like she a boss. She go as far as like trying to go into the boardroom and she come into the boardroom, y'all, to discuss in a bedroom with a in a boardroom with a real boss. And then Melody make her realize that look, you don't even know what you're doing. She's in the boardroom and everything she did in the boardroom, she copied from Mel. I'm talking about her ideals, when she stole her ideals in the comeback group. Now face it. Mel is the one that wrote all those, that paperwork for the comeback group. Just face it, y'all. How would you describe uh, Tisha? How would you describe her style? She has no style because everything she do, she's going to copy from Mel. But let me get back up, like going back into the boardroom. How the hell was she going to come in the, in, in, in the, in the boardroom? And think that she could go against the original, the real boss. Maybe Mel called her a bulldog. Not a real bulldog, but a baby bulldog. <laughs> you know, the, a baby bulldog have no power. If you a baby, you have no power. You have to depend on the grown-ups for everything when you a baby. That goes to go down to the puppies too. She called her a baby bulldog because Mel knows Mel Mel look at her and know that she lacks self esteem. So she started Im Im imitating Mel because she flat she is flattered. She's flattered and she was so happy to sit down with Mel when she came in there. Uh, with Mel by herself, Mel told her, you act different when you're not around these men. We have a different relationship. She practically big Mel. And then she finally told the truth. Well, I'm so used to you taking charge, Mel. Mel said, I got my limitation on you guys. 
Listen, I have to take baby steps. She almost was begging this woman. Mel had, Mel had to drive her back home. Hey, look, honey, don't you remember? Don't you remember you called me a dark soul? Don't you remember you called me a devil? Don't y'all remember y'all talked about my kids for season after season? Don't you remember how you made fun of me and stabbed me when I was hurting the most when my husband was dating around with coleslaw? Now you doing all of this now when the men are not around, thinking that you know you can you can pull me back in or track me back into the situation with you guys. No baby steps. Well, ma'am, you can make that decision. Mel said, no baby steps. They are dependent on Mel. And Mel and Mel told him, I don't want this the perception to be all about me. This woman right here thinks that she is Melody Cherie. Anything Melody do, she's going to do. She's not going to do anything differently. The only thing she can do is copy male intelligence. And that's the only thing that she can do. Now, y'all remember that behavior uh, during the comeback group meeting? Mel's told them, she told me, I'm not going to... I decided that uh, uh, we're not paying y'all. She didn't, you know, her husband put her up to say that. And then Mel told her about, you know, well, you know, you coming in here and neither one of y'all try to support me. They didn't try to support her. Well, Mel, 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 you know, not support me, but uh, sponsor me, sponsor me. With that mimosa dried in Mel head. And then he told me, well, Mel, I did support you. And Mel looked at her and said, I'm talking about. Oh, Lord. Well, Mel was talking about sponsorship. That, to me, is equal equivalent to Coast. Like when Coast all said that she came from a two-family household. Her dad lived in one household and her mama lived in one household. She didn't know the difference, y'all. And she went on and tried to argue that. When you go out and support somebody, like like she supported, uh, she supported Tiffany at her baby shower by coming in and eating up all her food. Yep. So she suffered from a lack of self a, 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 a lack of self esteem, and when, when we're looking at her imitate male, we know that she is it's a form of flattery. She is flattery. She admires this woman so much, so much. She admires her. She want to be like her. She want to talk like her. She want to look like her, and then. She know how her husband perceives Mel. Now, see, uh, uh, my soul want to be uh, in that driver's seat. Remember, he said he wanted to be president. So he want a woman like, uh, like Melody by his side, a woman with brains. Although he ain't got no brains, he think he got brains. But he would prefer a woman like Melody by his side. That's what he will, he will, he will prefer. Well... She want to be best friends again with Melody so that she could, uh, so that, you know, she can weep the benefit. And then she'll weep, weep the benefit of what male do, all male work. And her jealousy of how male is will cause her to steal everything from, from her. Now, y'all, I just want to say this. Did y'all pay attention to when uh, Marie said that, um, for Melody to uh, teach uh, a preservation, one of her property preservation classes by way of virtual. She shut it down. And that's when Mel looked at her and told her, you know, you just, uh, you just being um, close minded or something like that. But they want that property preservation. They want to learn how to do that. And and see, she didn't catch on to it because she copied everything. Maurice want to learn that he know that Kimmy could get it. Now, Kimmy's smart enough to get that property preservation classes because Mel make a lot of money. So that's what they want to learn how to do. So Maurice, that's what Maurice want. 
her to do to teach that property preservation class right there. Do you know that woman would have taught that uh, property preservation class and for free? How much money that that uh, uh, Tisha now would have bought in? She was not even going to get paid for it. All that money would have went into Tisha's uh, uh, pocket. But neither one of them have no identity of their own. So they still yours. Neither one of these two. On down to the hairstyle. They steal your your identity. They steal your business. They steal everything from you. They're not smart enough to see right through. They're not smart enough to do what Melody do. So they try to steal it. Their behavior is repulsive, you guys. They are, and you know, and I'm going to tell y'all something. I am just not that that uh, cold-hearted to, I do not want to see this couple win and they have children. Because they have children, you guys, but they don't seem to understand that they cannot con their way through life. They in the big game. Now, they, they used to being down there in that little hit town, Bessemer, Alabama, around those close-minded people, probably looking up to them, thinking that they're a celebrity, thinking that they're smart. But they in, they, they in another world now. You cannot con your way. Maybe you con your way when you go out shoplifting or something like that. You think you are all that when you get away from shoplifting. Oh, you probably be boosting and bragging about yourself every time you get away with stealing, allegedly. So now you come into to the boardroom and try to steal. Try to steal people's ideas in the, from, from the boardroom and then take it as if it's yours. Because they took that sponsorship very far. They even created that foundation, you guys, and said that they needed sponsorship. Now, when they Tisha get all up there, all they talk, she's trying to convince us that she's doing it for the community. When all they ever did was taken from the community. All they ever did. Now, that man over there in Meta here, all uh, what he did was fix houses up out there, that community. Y'all went out there and told that community up. Told them houses. Now, let me tell y'all something. They done had more than one house out there in that area. I looked it up. Right there on Wilkerson Drive, they had like two different houses on Wilkerson Drive and told them up. Then the community, people like Mr. Smith that cares about the community, got a little money. He's not rich, but what he is, he's a smart investor. But what he do, he go, go out there behind you guys and clean up those houses and put, put black families in these houses. So now y'all trying to copy out for him and say, this is what y'all want to do, what Mr. Smith is doing, y'all. Notice what they say they want to do. They want to build homes and put children in homes, and this is what Mr. Smith has done. That's who they copying off of, because that's what he do out there, the man that he so elegantly taking the court. And now you going to take his ideals now and run with it and try to make money off of it and claim that you happen to Helping the community out. Helping the community out. So I just want to say this to you guys, y'all. It would be nice if they did build that home. I know the area that, oh, uh, I looked that area up. It's really nice. If they get that house built over there, there's uh, some beautiful homes over that way. Like uh, my husband lived down that way. My, my ex-husband lived out there in Cedar Point. And they and those are some big beautiful homes out that way. Now, if he get them home, if he get that house built out there, that'd be so nice for him and his family. So, uh, my soul, do the right thing. That's all I could tell you. It's so much construction going on. You you could be a billionaire. You could be it if you would do right. And, and you know you're not qualified. You're not qualified to do any of this stuff allegedly. But then you go around and and and, and try to steal your way and lie your way through this. <laughs>